everybody, welcome to this video. Feels like it's been a while since I've filmed in here and also bookshelves. So two big things have happened to bring us to this point. One was we turned our old spare room slash home office into Rowan, our toddler's bedroom. These bookshelves used to be in that room and they have now been moved into our bedroom. Number two is that I moved out of my studio. Literally yesterday we brought all of the stuff back home and so I've got the task today of getting all of the books that you can see on the floor here that were in my studio along with some ornaments, some souvenirs on these shelves. As you can see there's some empty spaces. Win! Great! There's also some space on the shelves that we got built in our living room, whole video on that as well, somewhere. But this is the task of today. It's not time for a book clear out. I did that in my studio, so these are definitely all books that I want to keep, as are all of the ones on these shelves here because they had a recent clear out too. So I'm not getting rid of any books, we're just trying to fit them all here and reorganizing them. So all of these books down on the floor here are all sex and relationships books, probably all non-fiction, maybe like 90% non-fiction. And then these books here are like a mix of fiction, general non-fiction, YA, sci-fi, Harry, my old Harry Potter books that I can't get rid of. And then we've got some like fantasy stuff as well. It's a real mixed bag. These shelves actually go higher than you can see, but the absolute top, top compartments are filled with like our Christmas decorations and stuff. So we don't need to worry about those. They're just up there. But pretty much everything else is going to be filled with books. The other thing I need to think about is the fact that Rowan can reach all of these shelves here and loves just taking books off and putting them on the floor. I have no solution to this, it's very difficult to get a toddler to do what you want to do and make them stop doing a thing that they want to do. But I'm not overly precious about a lot of these books, so I'm going to try and not factor that in so much to what goes where. I think the only actually really important thing is that we put some heavy books on the bottom because it's actually kind of unsafe <laughs> the fact that these bottom ones are empty because we need to weigh down these shelves. So I think step one is actually to get all of the books off the shelves and then on the floor start organising it in terms of genre or like type of book, like in the sections that I want to have them on the shelves. And whilst I do that, I'm going to tell you about this video's sponsor, Squarespace. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for creators, entrepreneurs and freelancers to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out in the freelance world or you're a small business owner, Squarespace makes it super easy to create beautiful websites, engage with your audience and sell anything from physical and digital products to courses and to your time, all in one place, all on your terms. I've been using Squarespace for my websites for years. They've got really beautiful, flexible and professional website templates. You just find the one that is right for you and you can customize it with your own branding and content and add whatever features you want to meet your specific needs. You can pretty much make any template do whatever you want and it all works seamlessly on different devices, on desktop, mobile and tablet. This is all made so much easier with Squarespace's Fluid Engine which is their website design system that is really intuitive and powerful and just allows you to drag and drop and means that anyone, literally anyone, even me with no website design experience can get really creative and design a really great looking website. Squarespace also really helps you out with all of the different analytics features that they offer. It can help you learn how to grow your business with insights about site visits, traffic sources, search terms and most popular products and content. You can figure out what's working and what's not working to help improve your website and your content. So if you need a website for your project, or your business or whatever it may be, then head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash morehanna or just use the code morehanna to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Back to the shelves. 
Okay, so this is the current situation. Now I need to organize into genre. I feel like I actually just need to start putting things on the shelves. Otherwise, this is complete carnage. I can move things around after, but as I organize things into their genres, I just need to remove it from the floor. So, so far I've got a philosophy therapy section. Some of these are also Dan's books, although 95% of them are mine. Let's just start. Right. These are all some sort of memoir. Let's stick them up here for now. One of these in the middle. Right. Oh, I do know I've got a whole bunch of my books, various different editions, translations, and like original proofs and whatnot. And so I think I want all of them like just up top because they're not really for reaching them or just for like the mems, you know, the mems. I do think I need to get some more bookends. I've just remembered I've got a book. It's not okay to feel blue and otherwise we can throw that into the mental health section. I don't know why I've put philosophy and mental health together, but it, it makes sense in my brain a little bit, but we can always move it. We could always move them. Where do we go next? So it kind of looks like up top, we've started a bit of a non-fiction section. So I kind of want to continue in that vein and add some non-fiction up there. And I can immediately see a history pile. These are two books written by my lecturer at uni. But I mentioned in this one, for my students, especially those whose ideas have contributed to this book, and I'm listed by name in that, and I've not read it. <laughs> Sorry, David, I'm sorry. But they can go up there. And then I think we might have some other history books. Oh, I've got a lot of sexual history books, but do they go in a separate place? Because I can immediately see here, the sexual history of the global South, sexual politics in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. Most of the books that I decided to keep from the studio, it's because I'm like, I really want to read that. And I never got the chance to. I feel like I've got like a whole other like sexual history. Like here's one. Here's one, Victorian Guide to Sex. There's the curious history of sex in here somewhere as well. Let's just start sexual history up here. We'll see what happens. Oh, I see more nonfiction. Is this nonfiction? Or is it lots of short stories? I don't know. I don't know. Do we look it up? Do we look it up on Storygraph? I mean, we've got essays in love, which I would kind of put as like philosophically. So I'm gonna stick it up here. And then we've got essays, politics, Right, let's start piles for like essays and politics. I think we're gonna start a like parenting pile as well. Like this one is parenting, this one is parenting. Parenting. Well, parenting, it's all kind of like motherhood related anyway. Oh, then we've got self-help. The life-changing magic of not giving a fuck. I don't think, I, do I own any other like self-helpy books that this would go with? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. We've got a good like motherhood section that has kind of started to build here. So let's just put all these together. Although it includes the very hungover caterpillar. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Right, unwell women, a journey through medicine and a myth in a man-made world. I mean, this is history, is it not? Let's stick it there for now. Oh, I love that book. This might deserve a reread at some point, Eat, Sweat, Play, How Sport Can Change Our Lives. I love this book. Right, what am I even looking at? This is kind of self-helpy. Right, and then these are my non-fiction, like productivity, which leans into self-help, and then internet media book. Are these in the same category? I think feel good productivity, definitely self-helpy. This I think is slightly different, probably more like non-fiction political. <gasps> Let's put it in our politics pile. Okay, I swear I have other non-fiction books that aren't just the sex ones. Where is that pile gone? Where have you gone? Oh, there you are. Okay, let's have a look at what we've got in here. Right, yes, so these are all politics, kind of like race and politics. Do these go together with the other ones? Are any of them history? I feel like these are gonna come down here and then these are gonna go up here. Simon Clark's book, Firmament, which definitely isn't really related to any of <laughs> these other ones. We've started a bit of a sex history pile here, so I think I should continue that. I think we should continue that. This is very similar. So we've got the one about 
women and medicine and then this one is about racism and decolonizing healthcare by Dr. Anamel Shomimo. Right, so those kind of go together and then it also like then bridges the gap between these two sections. Any sex history books want to show themselves? Or are we just gonna have to like slowly make our way through? So actually, do you know what? Harry Potter books, you're going on the bottom. You're big, you're heavy. I'm gonna stick ah, you all down here. Does anything else fit down there? No, but we'll figure it out. Do I just need to knock, <laughs> knock all of these down? Right, over here, on the floor over here, this seems to be fiction. This is also another pile of fiction. Oh, and as is sex lessons from history, the once and future sex. I found sex history books and another one. Oh wait, no, hmm, interesting. So this is the Middle Ages, a graphic history. Is it? I think it's just generally about the Middle Ages, but you know, it's a bit rude. So that can go in general history. And then these can be added to our sex history. Right, this is Fern. This is the same author, Fern. There we go. All right, things are happening. And then I just need to find Kate Lister's book, which is in here somewhere. Seeing as we've got Harry Potter on the bottom, let's also stick Lord of the Rings down there because then we, we're in a bit of a fantasy kind of vibe down at the bottom. And then we've got Stardust, we've got Brandon Sanderson, and we've got Terry Pratchett. And then Philip Pullman. We've got Northern Lights, but none of the others. And then the Sally Lockhart series. Are these fantasy? They're kind of like historical fiction with a detective. Is there, I read them so long ago, I'm like, is there a fantastical element to them? I don't know. We'll just stick it down here because it's with Northern Lights and it's the same author. That's nice. Isn't that nice? Ooh, sex positive talks to have with kids. So there has definitely been over the years, because of my previous job as a sex educator, acquiring a lot of books that relate to talking to children and young people about sex. And so I have all of these books that I was like professionally hanging on to in terms of like sex education. But now, as I have a young person in my life, I'm going to, I think, to save a space on these shelves, we can put all of these, the shelves in Rowan's room that he can't reach or anything. And actually, I already have books on those bookshelves that are like my childhood books, like Narnia is on there, and then some other like books that I read as a kid, but it's once you're like an older kid who can read. So yeah, let's get all of the kid books and we can put them on his shelves. Nice, 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 nice. New pile. Okay, so that, there's more fiction here as well. You get out of the way. We'll deal with you later. Right, here we go. Sex is a funny word. Okay, this isn't like a serious one, but my auntie found this in a charity shop. It's like one of those penguin classics. Your body originally belonged to someone called Jill Gulliver. Oh, there's a mouth and a tongue. Lovely. She's got a liver, some kidneys. Look at her. Right. Yeah, these these are all for Rowan's room. Here we go. Look. Can we talk about consent, respect, consent boundaries, and being in charge of you? So exciting. All of these books are gonna come to use. Oh, I've got all of Ollie Pike's books. And then also like a kid's book about true health stories, how I broke up with my colon. This actually might be really useful. It's like a comic book and it's got different health conditions in it. What's it got in it? Let's have a look. But this would be a good one for Rowan for explaining my stoma. Look, there's the colon. You're the reason I have constant inflammation. You and your stress. Oh, nothing to say now, that's a first. Over the next two and a half years, we fought. I lost half my body weight. I went on so many medications, it was crazy. Anyway, oh my God. And then it's them and their colon on a, ther on a therapist's couch or on a doctor's couch, I don't know. Anyway, maybe it's useful. I'll have to read it first. Oh dear. Right, okay. Did we find out if this was fiction or non-fiction? We did not. Right, that's the 100 boyfriends. Fiction, short stories, that's what I thought. Right, fiction, boom. Right, now what are we doing? Get your mojo back, sex, pleasure, and intimacy after birth. I was like thinking, do I put that in the motherhood section? But not really, I feel like it belongs in the sexy section. Oh my God. The thing is, is that the studio had all of these books organized by color. And this is probably why, because it's difficult to organize by genre. I can see more kids books. I can see more. Let's go. Right, they're in here somewhere. Here we go. Here we go. These ones, these ones. I love this as well, because like, this is V is for vulva, but then you've got a reading guide for parents. <gasps> Great, right, let's. I spotted Alex Norris's How to Love here. I really want to read this, but also 
if we're gonna put some books on the shelves in the living room, you kind of want them to be like pretty books, books that somebody else can like pick up and read, like coffee table books. This is a good contender to start the pile for living room books. And actually, I do have some mahusive books that could join Alex there. Right, so we've got this modern love, lots of like love letters, breakup letters things, that's a good one. And then I can see them all here, they're all under this, under this pile. We're just making more mess. It's fine, it's fine, is it fine? Here we go, these are the big books. So, we've got My Vulva and I, a vulva diversity project by Lydia Reeves, who's the artist who did my boobs and vulva cast. That's her book. Then you've got another vulva book, A Celebration of Vulva Diversity, which is the Vulva Galleries book. Oh, yeah, the mental load. That actually might be a really great one just to always have out as a constant reminder of gender inequalities within domesticated relationships. And then this is one of my favorites. This is the Institute of Sexology book, which is the exhibition that they had at the Welcome Collection back in like 2014. And I have a book of all of the things from it that they gave me, which I love. Right. Those are good living room books. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so, right. We might need to st also start moving around some of these souvenirs that I've just popped on the middle shelf. I don't know where to put this as well. I did this, a Sophie T art class during lockdown, a virtual painting sesh. Not entirely sure where to put this. <laughs> Do we put it next, does it fit here? There you go, Harry Potter, have some boobs. This is my uh, slim poetry collection. We've got Bo Burnham, Lena Norms, and Shannon Barry. Those, those are my four poetry books. I'm not really a poetry person, but I want to be. I want to read these and see if I can get into some poetry. Right, where are we going to put these? Let's, let's, let's come back to them. Poetry books on the floor. Maybe they could be living room books as well. That's kind of poetry, kind of. That. Right. Okay, Curious History of Sex, I found you. And I found another sex history book. No, not that one. What was I looking for? This is Sexuality, a graphic guide. We want a Queer History, a graphic guide, which is this one. Sex at Dawn, your sex history book. A Little Gay History, your sex history book. Let's start filling this up. What is the etiquette for like, the size of books. Do you organize it based off of height, off of thickness? Right, sex history section coming along. So these are my fun ones. We've got the Kama Sutra, that's a historical artifact in itself. And then we've got the dictionary of sex quotations, which is super funny just to look through. Right, this is a mess. <laughs> right, so I'm kind of thinking that the themes are gonna be around like feminism, sex, and then like, LGBTQ+, body stuff, and then like relationships, I think. And then like politics, but maybe it's like feminism and politics. That's like, you know, you know what I'm saying? What is this? Right, this I think is general nonfiction. Or oh, is it? Where's your subtitle? I wanna know what you're about. Lots of essays about. Oh, okay, okay. But we're gonna put it in feminism and then we'll, we'll find out. We'll find out, one day we'll find out. Right, Untamed, Glennon Doyle. Pretty sure you're a memoir. So I think I'm actually gonna put you up here. Okay. Okay. Is three women fiction? Is this fiction? Didn't this person follow three women? Like it's, this is a work of non-fiction. Author's note. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I'm so overwhelmed. Okay. Okay. Right. I just need to start. I just need to start. I need to show you the situation. This is what I'm looking at. This is what I'm dealing with currently. This is stressing me out. Right, let's just start. Let's move these. Sorry. Oh wait, actually, I don't even know if there's going to be any room for these. Right, let's just start. Five arguments all couples need to have. Relationships. Let's just start a relationships section. I kind of feel like after sex history, I kind of want this to be like feminism and politics. So I'm gonna start relationships over here. What else can I see that's related to relationships? Uh, here we go, all about love. Right, let's start our feminism pile, why not? Visible women. Let's say, let's do three women as, let's say that's feminism. <laughs> why women have better sex under socialism? Audrey Lord. Ooh, the state of affairs, Esther Perel, that's relationships and mating in captivity. Relationships. What was this shelf again? Feminism, here we go. Feminists don't wear pink. Men who hate women. God damn you, Laura Bates. 
why. It's such a brutal book. Oh, Roxanne Gay. Let's put you, you how, how big are you? How big is this book? These books, In the Dream House and Her Body and Other Parties. I can't remember if these are non-fiction or if they're short stories. Short stories. It says short stories. This is like short stories but based on her real experience, but these two need to go together. What are these books? They come so highly recommended. Right. Carmen Maria Mercado. I will come back to you. All right. What else have we got? What else have we got? Ooh, Pleasure Activism. This is our next book for the Doing It book club on my Patreon. I mean, it's probably the current book in terms of when you're reading this. Oh my God, I've just seen it's 400 pages long. Right. Best get going. Right, where are we at? Where are we at? The Art of Receiving and Giving, Wheel of Consent. I kind of, I mean, it probably goes in sex, but I think it's about consent more broadly. Let's put you there. What have we got in this pile? Right, we've got Come As You Are. So we're gonna do like sex advice books. We've got LGBT, good. Right, Ooh, more sex advice. Sex and social media. That's not really advice though, is it? So maybe we do different kind of like thinky thinky, advicey advice, advicey advicey. Oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. This one. Right, I'm gonna, I, I need to come, I, I'll come back to you two. I'll come back to you two. What? Where did I put my LGBT stuff? Did I drop them? Here we go. All right, we're starting. Yeah. What have we got here? Sexuality, beyond the gender binary. Oh, and then we've got like sciencey stuff. I mean, this is feminism, but like satire. But I think we can still probably put it up here. Feels weird putting it next to a very serious book about violence against women. But here we are. This is the world we live in. Right, sex education. Okay, right, so I think I've got it. This is like, no, I don't got it. Right, I'm just, I'm going, I'm going off vibes. Ooh, revolting prostitutes. Right, so you're kind of like feminist politics. Will you, will you fit up there? There's another, there's playing the whore as well. And then there's sexism and the sister. <laughs> right, let's stick them up there. Oh, memoir. I found a memoir. Get up here, Callum. Okay. Right, right. I feel like I've got a whole category of like sex science-y books. Like we've got these four. Testosterone, Rex, Vagina, Bonk and Inferior. So I would say they're all like educational, but not like necessarily advice. So they're gonna go there. Thank you, thank you. Right, this is in the feminism section. What's gonna go here? Was there something here? Well, there is now. Oh no, I don't like putting come together there in a separate place to come as you are. So all of the Emily Nagoski books are going together. Right, this is radical intimacy, which is like, it's politics, it's feminist. Right. Sex ed, sex ed, sex ed. Okay, we're trying not to overthink it. I feel like the ethical stripper needs to kind of go with our books about sex work. So now our feminism shelf is full, so we'll see. I found another science of sex book. You can go in here. The ethical slut. I guess that's about relationships because it's non-monogamy. Here's relationships. Yeah. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Look, there's only a few left, at least of the non-fiction books from the studio. We still have all of the fiction books to sort out, but that I think should be easy enough because they were already kind of sorted for the most part in genre, but this is the what we're left with. I think we can do it. Bodies. Ultimate Guide to Disability. Am I Ugly? V. Period. So, I mean, maybe, I don't think I've got enough relationship books, so I think maybe we stick these body ones here. And then, oh, what's this? Oh no, it's a feminism book. It's fine, because I'm gonna read this. <laughs> so we're taking this off, so it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It just basically means I always have to read something from this shelf. Okay, reading that next. Okay, boys and sex. You can go there. Sexuality, a graphic guide. Is this sexuality in like the broadest sense of the word or sexuality? in terms of sexual orientation. Broader sense of the word. So, you go in here, baby. Oh, bodies, 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 vagina monologues, health for every size. I think we put the booby mug here, surely. What's this? Okay, this could be a good one. 
for like a young person when they're a bit older. A teen, a teen, if you will. Right, and so then we just have some erotica, which I think I'm gonna stick here. And these confusing ones, which I'm gonna put here. And then Sex Lies of African Women, which is gonna go here. Love it, love it. Is there room for any more fun stuff? on these shelves. It's not really a good bookend, but it'll do. Yeah, that's not a good bookend, but maybe there. It can kind of go there. A vulva puppet. No room for my vulva puppet yet. Screaming vulva. And go down here. Right, fiction, 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 fiction. Boom, 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 boom. Right, so we've got our fantasy down the bottom. I've got some more fantasy and sci-fi on the floor but I kind of don't want them to be so low down. So actually, I'm gonna continue the kind of YA trend. Not all of this is YA, but some of it is. And actually, I think I'm gonna make this YA. And then I can fill these ones with more fiction fiction. Okay, 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 okay. So, heart stopper. You're going down here. Some books have fallen under the bed. Hi, can you see me? I'm here, I'm still here. Right, YA, we've got Gwat. We've got Straight Expectations, we've got some E. Lockhart, and then we've got some others. I've gotten rid of most of my YA, I've just kept the ones that like, hit. You know, they hit. Or oh, they're my friends, and they hit. Lovely, that's a shelf. <laughs> we did it. Okay, I've found my sci-fi fantasy collection. Right, and I want that to be quite prominent, because I like these books. At least the ones I've read I <laughs> like. I mean, Wicked is very fantasy. And then you get into like magical realism and weird shit. And then I don't know what some of these are, but the rest I know are kind of like sci-fi dystopian. Yeah. Wicked feels out of place, if I'm honest, but it is what it is. Oh wait, Melanie's book have a bit of magical realism in them as well. So, right, let's do it this way because these are big ass books. This one's magical realism. It's never let me go sci-fi. Like, I guess it is, but it doesn't feel like you're reading sci-fi. Because if anything, me saying it's sci-fi is revealing the twist. <laughs> I don't know, I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Like, if the fact that a book is sci-fi is the twist, so for the most part of the book that you're reading it, you're not experiencing it as a sci-fi novel, is it even sci-fi? Honestly, I don't know. Right, then we've got a bunch of classics. We've got a bunch of contemporary stuff, and we've got some rom-coms. And then we've got our boyfriend's short stories as well. So classics, stick you there. Like what's the difference between an old classic and then a modern classic? I guess modern classic is a genre in itself, isn't it? Actually, I've put like Orwell and Margaret Atwood together. So, but then you've got like Of Mice and Men and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. And also I think I associate these as being older because like it's my mum's old copy of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest and it's absolutely battered. And it's also the film cover with Jack Nicholson on it. But I, I kind of love that cover. Not usually a film cover gal, but I think it's just because it's so ruined. Right, I actually think that I don't need to worry too much. Like, these are just my other oldie books. And then rom-coms, I guess you're gonna go here, but I feel like we need to put more stuff on there. And then here, we've got our kind of like modern literary stuff. I guess How to Build a Girl can go here as well. I mean, it's fine if they're not all full, because then that means I've got more room to buy more books. We've got the 100 Boyfriends short stories, but I don't have like a short story space. So for now, I'm gonna put it in the LGBT section. Ah! This one is this section. Right, and then we've got that and this and this. I think I'm gonna put my poetry down here. Oh wait, there's room for the vulva. Feels inappropriate being next to the classics, but why not? Why not? Yeah! And then we've also got the uterus and another one. Right, you're gonna go. Where's their space? There we go. A voila! I did it! The only issue is that there's no room on the feminist shelf for all of the feminist books, but that's fine because we'll just start doing that. And then it can start to overflow down here. It can, yeah, I guess it can overflow down here into the erotica section. Man, that feels good. Right, now the only thing to really do is books on the living room shelves and books on Rowan shelves. Also in this process, I found my Kindle, which is completely dead. And I feel like it might take a while to properly boost up or may never boost up again. But let's do that, let's put that on charge. The only other thing that happened as well was I moved this box off the shelves, which is the kind of like Rowan's art things, which I'm just gonna shove under the bed, done. And then actually, 
I don't have the ability to do this right now, but ba -da -ba, this is the doing it neon sign from my studio. And Dan reckons that we should put it up in this room and turn it on when we're having sex, which I find hilarious. And actually, I think it would look really nice on this green wall because the yellow would show up really well. It's just about figuring out where to put it and where we can run the wire. I think maybe above the bedroom, you can't see it, but there's more of this green above the bathroom door. And then you can run the wire like along here. And so it's not like sticking out so much. That's what I'm gonna suggest anyway. But yeah, thank you for watching and joining me on this adventure, organizing my bookshelves. I am very happy that these are full again. It's been kind of sad having them in this room like half empty and not really feeling I don't know, like energized. It feels like I've given this room like a whole new lease of life, actually having books on these shelves. It's very fun. There are a lot of books on these shelves that I have not read yet. So if you spotted anything that you really loved and you would recommend, then let me know in the comments. And if I haven't read it, I will mentally add that to my TBR. If you give a good recommendation. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe because the actual vlog of the whole process of moving out of the studio is going to be up soon at some point. So, you know, subscribe so you don't miss it. Bye.